Hi guys, it's me, Zachary O'Neill, and I am here speaking with Erica Sato from the new series, Married to Medicine Houston, and excuse me, Dr. Erica Sato. <laughs> I know some people are particular about that with the doctor, and I don't know if you are or not, so I just wanted to correct myself. But again, thank you so much for speaking with me, um, taking the time out to do an interview um, to talk about Married to Medicine Houston. Um, so I'm super excited because I'm actually from Houston. I live in Dallas now, but I'm from Houston. And um, when I heard about it, I was like, oh, they would do a show like right when I leave. So, <laughs> but how did you um, become a part of the Married to Medicine Houston cast? Well, I think that even though Houston is the fourth largest city, the medical community is actually very small. And so when they set out to cast women um, in their 30s or 40s, who were attractive, um, it was pretty easy to narrow it down to people that knew each other. Uh -huh. And so I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think the requirements were that you fit the physical profile, had the credentials, and then somehow knew everybody else that they were interested in. Okay. So you know the other girls in the group in some some way. I, well, before the show, yeah. I was already really good friends with Monica Patel, the okay. cardiologist. Okay. Um, and then James Sullivan, Rachel's husband, was a general surgery resident ahead of me okay. um, by a few years. So we actually worked together a ton. And James, Monica, and I used to hang out socially before we all got a little bit older and I got married and James got married. And so, um, Ashandra's husband, Ricky, is a device sales rep in the OR, so I never hung out with Ricky socially, but I knew him at work. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so, are you originally from Houston? No, I'm from okay. Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, I, I'll say I didn't know that you guys had actually um, received a premiere date until I kind of was like browsing around the Bravo site. So I was like, oh, dang, they're coming out already and so fast because it's November 11th that the premiere is, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So are you excited, nervous for the premiere? Um, I'm nervous because even though we lived everything, we have not seen the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's standard that you don't see it till everybody else sees it. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um... So I already asked you if you knew someone. So would you say that you're close, like closer to anybody since, I guess since all the whatever happened during the season, would you say you're closer to any certain person in the group? You know, honestly, I think it stayed the way it was coming into it. Monica okay. and I, I think are closer than we were okay. uh, when we started filming, but um, we're definitely closer to each other than I am or she is to the other girls okay. in the cast. And I think Ashandra and Rachel, who were good friends coming into this, are closer with each other than they are with the rest of us. Okay. So it's almost like we have, you know, little best friends amongst the bigger group. Okay. So how do you think you guys, I don't know if you've seen the Married to Medicine Atlanta cast, um, but if you have, but how do you think you would differ from that show? I think the Married to Medicine Atlanta cast is more um, kind of housewife heavy. Okay. I think the doctors have a little bit um, smaller of a role, and a lot of the the big dramatic scenes really revolve around the wives. Right. And um, I think we're a little bit different because we only have one housewife. Okay. And she's actually a nurse, you know, or she's in school to be a nurse, um, Rachel. But everybody's a doctor okay. otherwise. So I think we're a little bit heavier on the medicine side of things. Oh, cool. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so as far as your, cause you're a, correct me if I'm wrong, on Bravo at least it said that you were a plastic surgeon. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I'm a plastic surgeon. Okay. So do you own your own practice or are you um, practicing at a different um, practice? So I am a part of Houston Plastic Craniofacial and Sinus Surgery. Okay. It's a group. There are seven doctors in our group. So we are private practice, but I have six partners. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then your husband is a doctor as well. Is that right? Yeah. So Derek is also a doctor. He's an MD. Okay. But he is about eight years behind me. He's oh. a little bit younger than me. <laughs> but he's actually still a resident. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so now there wasn't a lot that I 
could like find out at like such a sort of amount of time. So some of the questions I kind of have, it's kind of like basic things, I guess. So I apologize for that. Yeah, um, that's fine. But as far as being in the medical field, because I know nothing about the medical field. I work in insurance, so I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Insurance <laughs> does have a lot to do with medicine. Well, true. <laughs> <laughs> so in the medical field, um, particularly with plastic surgery, what do you think is maybe one of the hardest things or challenges you face with patients that come to you? You know, my job is actually pretty amazing now. I think you go through many milestones to get where I'm at, but mm -hmm. just recently my practice has become almost 100% cosmetic. It's all cash pay. Mm -hmm. um, my patients are fabulous. You know, I almost feel like we're friends with each other. I don't have to have any of those hard discussions about, you know, illnesses or end of life or okay. anything like that. And so I actually very much enjoy my job now. Okay. I think, you know, in the past I had to do a lot of grunt work, you know, a lot of really sick patients, a lot of ER call, a lot of late nights, up mm -hmm. all night, fingers cut off, hands cut off. Um, so, you know, I think back then it was awful, you know, to go to tell somebody that, you know, that's right hand dominant that, you know, they cut their thumb off, that they're going to lose, you know, 40% of their hand function because you receive that from your thumb is devastating right. to have to break that news. And I don't have to do any of that. You know, now I'm like, oh, you've had a baby. You want a mommy makeover? What do you want to work on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So now where did you actually go to school, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I went to undergraduate and medical school at the University of Missouri, Columbia. Okay. So about two hours from Kansas City. Okay. Um, and then for residency, it is kind of a match process where you don't have a ton of control over where you end up. And so you apply widely and you interview widely. And um, the match brought me to Houston. And so I came here um, and did general surgery at the University of Texas okay. in the medical center. And then um, plastic surgery at the same place. So I did eight years of residency after medical school. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Long road. <laughs> All right. So um, being in Houston, I know just for me, I I was in Houston forever. Um, so is Houston somewhere you kind of see yourself like long term, forever? Or would you like to move around? When I came to Houston... Literally, I remember driving in the med center. And back then, Houston wasn't what it is today. Mm -hmm. It has gotten very nice here. But <laughs> when I first moved here, it wasn't that way. And I remember my mom coming with me, and we were looking for an apartment. We knew we wanted to be close to the medical center because I was going to have bad hours. And all the apartments had barbed wire around them. And that was, like, new for us. You know, I'm from Missouri. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, like, barbed wire to keep the cows in. But... And, you know, my mom's like, oh, are we in a bad neighborhood? And I'm like, I don't think so. Because the apartment itself looked, like, really great. Yeah. Um, you know, fast forward, I think I was like, oh, my God, I'm getting out of here. Like, as soon as my X amount of years of residency are done, I'm gone. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going home to the Midwest. And then it's weird because it just grows on you. And you kind of fall in love with Houston. And now Houston's my home. And when it was time to go, I didn't want to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I get a lot because um, I moved from Houston to Dallas. And so there's like this huge like rivalry and it's like, oh, you're a traitor. Well, okay. But <laughs> well, it's like if you saw that interview clip that one of the Real Housewives of Dallas did where she compares Houston and Dallas and she just acts like Houston's like the stepchild. You oh know? yeah, I did. I saw that. I did. Um, so, well, speaking of that, um, have you ever been to Dallas at all? Oh, I've been to Dallas a lot. Okay. Because, I, yeah. you know, people say, like, oh, I've never been to Houston. I'm like, I don't, how is that possible? Like, how have you never it's been? It's only, like, four hours away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, with the trailer, um, I did watch the trailer a couple of times. Um, and it seems like there's a fair amount of drama that goes on. Um, so, would you say that you're... I know you can't give too much away, but you, would you say you're involved or would you try to stay away from the drama during the season? Um, I think I definitely try to stay away. It's yeah. hard to do. Um, but I think when you're new to reality TV mm. and you kind of worry about, you know, what is my family going to think? You know, what right. are my patients going to think? Mm -hmm. um, what are my partners going to think from work? You know, yeah. you really like, I don't want my first scene to be so dramatic. And yeah. so I think I really tried to step back and think, you know, what, what would I be proud of, you right. know? 
And so I think I did really hold it in and that wasn't a good idea because you're like a ticking time bomb then. Yeah. So then you just like stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet, and then you just explode. And you're like, oh my gosh, that was more embarrassing than if I had just let it out initially. Right. Okay. So what was it like having the camera, like going from, you know, just being a plastic surgeon, going to work every day to having cameras follow you all the time? Um, you know, it was difficult at work being a plastic surgeon because um, a lot of my patients don't want people to know that they're having surgeries. So right. I think that was very difficult. We had a lot of trouble finding patients who wanted their surgery filmed or wanted to tell their story. Right. Um, and I think it's just the field of medicine that I'm in because right. a lot of people want to be discreet about their cosmetic plastic surgery. Okay. All right. So how did it, um, outside of work, like affect walking around with the camera following you and people watching and look, cause I know sometimes when I see. Yeah. You, okay. <laughs> so great story. So we were at a nice restaurant doing a scene. And when you do a scene, they have to clear the scene. So they have like anybody that would be in the background sign a disclaimer, like right. that they're aware they're going to be on TV. So like the table behind you, those four people sign something. Otherwise they get up and move. Right. And there's like lights and like 20 cameramen. So it's obvious that you're doing something big in there, right. but they don't say on the paper that they sign what show it is or anything. And so, um, we were eating at this nice restaurant, a bunch of cast members and you know, it, it takes a, a few hours to kind of get through everything. Mm -hmm. And on um, this, girl over kind of catty corner from us kept kind of looking over and Derek was sitting on my left, my husband, and she kept looking over and smiling and looking over and smiling. So when we got done with the scene and the cameraman stepped back, she walked over and she propositioned my husband to go home because she said, clearly you're some sort of famous. So, you know, would you like to go home with me? What? <laughs> He's so cute. He kind of turns to me and he says, oh, I'm sorry. This is my wife. Like we're not actors, you know, like this is really my wife. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of, paused and looked at us and said, okay, both of y'all. What? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, nothing like that has ever happened to what? us. I mean, we were like in shock and we were like, um, no, thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. The things people do for fame. That is just yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I can only imagine that that kind of stuff will probably get worse as people figure out because now if we were to go around and film, people are going to know who we are. Right. You know, but wow. yeah. So. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and then the other time, we were in a nice restaurant. We were having brunch, and it was just the ladies. And we went in the restroom. And, you know, the camera guy follows you everywhere. So, like, it, they don't know, like, if it's going to be interesting or not, but they don't leave your side, you right. know? So it's, like, real life. So we go in the restroom, and this lady who was in the stall decided that I think she wanted a moment of fame. And so we're in there at the sink, and she just, like, busts out of the stall and starts cursing us out. We don't even know her. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so we're just like, uh, okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. That yeah. Crazy. So then she, we saw her go back to her table when we went back to our table and you could see him like high fiving, like so excited that she got in there and her scene might be used. That is insane. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine. Oh my goodness. Okay. That is just, that's. Okay, I would never think so. I mean, I guess stuff like that can happen. People want to be, yeah. get their little Oh, yeah, people want to. Yeah, that's crazy, especially in Houston, because I know there's not a lot, a ton of reality shows that have shot in Houston that I know of anyway. I know. Well, I think a lot have tried, but they didn't take off. So a lot of pilots have been oh, done here. okay. But according to everybody, they just don't get accepted or, you know. Oh, okay. Because I know there was a few. I know that like the little little um, little couple. I think they're in Houston. Yeah, my hairdresser actually does their hair. Oh, so it's neat. funny because we. I started going to him like eleven years ago when I first moved here for residency, mm -hmm. and she started going to him at the same time, and she was also a resident. And it, he has continued to do both of our hair the whole way. And then last year, when I said, "Hey, P.S., I'm going to be on a reality TV show." He was like, oh my gosh, I'm like the hairdresser to the stars in Houston. You know? <laughs> How funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, um, so watching, so when we watch the show, obviously no one's really seen anything yet. Um, what is something that you want people to take away from watching you? I think um, what I learned going through this really long residency is that a lot of people who are not in medicine think that everybody's rich that's in medicine. They think your life is so easy. Um, and it's not, you know, during residency, you're paid minimum wage. 
And I don't think anybody realizes that because you're well into your thirties when you finish. And so my friends who are teachers and whatnot, who think they don't make good money, made that money at 22, 23, 24, you know, and we're sitting there working like, you know, fast food workers. And then you get done and you don't have that house. You don't have that car. You more than likely didn't have kids if you're a female, because how would you do all of that? You know? So I, I want people to know how hard the process is, the real world aspect of it. Um, and how you're not rich, you know, it takes a long time. Now, do I make good money compared to most people now? Yes. But I've only been doing that for a little over two years and I'm 38, okay. you know? Okay. So all of my friends are like, well, yeah, but you're killing it. But yeah, but I, I did not until I was after I was 35. Right. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. Cause I, again, you know, I don't know anything about medicine, so I had no idea that yep. it was that you guys get paid minimum wage during presidency. Well, you get paid. It goes up every year with inflation, but you get paid currently for a resident right now in Houston somewhere in the 40000 thousands. Okay. So depending on what program you're at, it could be like 45000 or whatever. Right. But you work 80 plus hours a week. Right. So when you divide that, it's, it's nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. I am definitely going to think twice because you know most people think of doctors like oh doctors have all this money and these big houses and and i think with i think with watching television anyway that's all that we really see it's not like they get normal people well i don't want to say normal people but like people who don't have these you know 20 bedroom houses or you know things like that so well if you think about it though if you look at the medical shows that are currently out Mm -hmm. they're either the men or the doctor and the woman on the show is the wife, right. and she's a lot younger than the man. Right. And so his practice is well established, and they've had money for several years. Like right. he, you know, he's well out of residency. Or if you look at the women, even if you look at uh, Married to Medicine Atlanta, they're a little bit older. Mm-hmm. When they casted us for this show, they wanted young right. women. And so I think it's pretty even across the board that most people have only been making good money for five years or less. So, you know, we don't live at the level that some of these other reality stars live at. Not yet, at least. Right. Okay. Well, that's... So, let me see what other questions I have. Um, That's a really good takeaway. I'm really going to think about that now. Because I really did not even... Imagine now you that. Explain them. If you know we get a second or a third or whatever season, you'll definitely see my style escalate and you know, <laughs> and I'll buy a house at some point, but <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think that happens after like like everybody's first like the first season's kinda like, okay, what's going on? And the second season is like everybody's blown up and they have all this good stuff. So okay. <laughs> so well then I guess let's do this. So after filming everything. That you've done everything you've been through with the season. I don't. How long did you guys film? Like we okay. So it was a little bit weird. We filmed a year and a half ago, and we filmed. Yeah, it was a while back. So when oh. you look at there, I literally had just graduated from residency for six months when we started filming. Oh. Now I've been in practice two years and four months. Oh. So yeah. So the clothes and the things I can afford now are very different than I could afford when we filmed. Right. Um, but we filmed for four months straight with a camera crew with us. You know, twenty four seven. Right. And okay. then. We did all of those green screen interviews after. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know if that's the norm because this is my first reality show. Right. But it was really weird. So the filming actually dragged on for almost a year. Oh. But it wasn't with the cameras in our day to day life for the whole right. time. Okay. Wow, a year and a half ago. So then it's kind of like watching all this stuff. Do you think you're going to yeah, get judged for fashion? <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> I won't do that, I promise. Um, but watching everything, like, do you feel like it's gonna, like, stir up some old emotions or? Well, so when we filmed, my husband and I had been married for like six months and, um, it's a stressful situation, you know? And I think we were not on the same page for a lot of things. Um, you know, we didn't have a terrible marriage, but it was definitely a work in progress trying to juggle both of us being physicians and the workload at home. And um, now, you know, we've been married two and a half years and we're in like wedded bliss. Like we figured it out. And so I think watching that might be a little bit embarrassing because I don't know that I want the whole world to think that that's how we are now. Right. Okay. Well, hopefully you guys will get like a reunion or something and you'll be able to to be like, no, life is good. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's neat. So um, it's interesting because I, you know, I kind of, 
I, or at least I tried anyway. I tried to like make my own little reality kind of show. Um, so hearing like the actual, <laughs> so hearing the actual process of what you guys went through, it's just like, golly, like I can't imagine going through that and then being married for only six months and then having all that. It's just, I can't, I don't think I could imagine doing that. So. No, it, it was absolutely stressful because I was new to practice. You're trying to get busy. You know, if you're not busy, you're not paying your bills. Right. And, you know, so it was a lot, lot, lot to juggle. Okay. Well, okay, so let's kind of see if I can think of, like, some fun things to ask you now. All the serious things out the way. All right, so, um... I thought you'd be asking me to talk shit on the other girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know anything to ask because I haven't yeah. seen anything. <laughs> so it's like, I can't be like... I mean, I guess I could ask who you don't really get along with, but then it's like, I don't know if I want you to give it away. Yeah, um... <laughs> So I wouldn't say that I don't get along with anyone. I think I'm absolutely the girl that kind of gets along with everyone. Yeah. But I choose to be that way. You yeah. know, if, if I wanted to give my opinion in every scene, then, you know, I probably wouldn't be friends with any of the girls. Oh, but God. I think when you have a big group of girls and they're alpha females, you know, it can get very catty very quickly because everybody kind of wants to be the leader right. of the pack. Right. And so sometimes you just have to be the better person and step back and let them you know, have their moment because otherwise you would just be fighting all the time. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more to ask as far as the show, but it's like, I haven't seen it yet. So I can't be like, well, what did you do with this? And who? You yeah. Know? So. <laughs> we definitely chat after the episodes air. You know, yeah, we can have like a little meet back and you have like definitely. 500 questions for me. <laughs> yes, I probably <laughs> like, will. Is she fake? Is she really the bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Is she really like this? Did you see? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, okay, well then, what about, um, oh, do you have any children? I don't think you said So, that. we don't have children. Okay. And that's a big um, part of our, like, life stresses, I think, is that um, I had my eye on the prize, and I wanted to be a plastic surgeon since I was very, very young. Uh -huh. And at the time that I entered residency, it was still very much a man's world. Okay. It was looked down upon if you took maternity leave or, you know, had any anything else on your plate besides being a surgeon. And okay. I, you know, I probably made a mistake by listening to that, but I did that. And so I didn't meet Derek till a lot later because I wasn't really worried about getting married and stuff. And then right after you turn 35, it hits you like a freight train and you're like, oh my God, I'm not married. Yeah. Am I just the cat lady? <laughs> Like, who's going to want me? My eggs are shriveling up as we speak, you know? <laughs> and then I, it was like, I don't know. It's like the clouds parted, the heavens opened, and Derek fell in my lap. I mean, he's absolutely gorgeous. He's like, he's tall, thin, six-pack, beautiful boy from West Texas, cowboy boots. I mean, I thought, <laughs> oh, thank God. I waited, and, you know, I was blessed because, you know, I didn't rush anything. Yeah. And then we just kind of thought, are we ready to get, do we want to be the couple that gets pregnant like five minutes after we're married? Because, right. you know, it'll be more stress on our relationship and stuff. But then it was breathing down our neck that I'm older and, you know, maybe we don't have a very big window and it became really stressful and not fun. Uh -huh. And, um, and long story short, I never really got pregnant. And so I think instead of it really being a choice, it's maybe not a choice at this point. And so we are currently going through IVF. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so well, not yet, but hopefully a baby well, soon. I wish you guys the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so one question that I kind of have is, I hope this doesn't come off like nosy or whatever, but yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> is your your race? Like what? Oh, um, so my dad is Japanese. Okay. Um, but my mom is a bunch of different things, but mostly Italian. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So it's really weird because um, I think I have, you know, Asian features like through my mid face, but um, my, mine and my sister's hair is curly. So I like it straight because you always want what you don't have. Right. But right. we both have curly hair and my sister actually looks Hispanic. Like oh. a lot of people would never guess she's Asian. Oh, okay. Yeah. And she's very dark complected. Like she looks tan oh. all year round and I'm kind of pale. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so when you mix things, sometimes it's strange what comes out. Yeah. So do you speak any other languages? I you know when I was little, when I was three, um, four, and five, we lived in Japan. Oh, cool. And um, I was bilingual, like completely bilingual. Oh. And then we moved to California. 
Um, and I repeated kindergarten there because I was behind language wise, but the way the school year is, it didn't make me fall behind because you start earlier there. So I actually have to go around saying I did fail kindergarten and I did have to take it twice, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, but, uh, I think, you know, me and my sister got embarrassed. I, we grew up in Missouri mainly, but some in Tennessee. Right. And at the time, it was a little bit racist. And it, you weren't proud of being something else. You right. know, me and my sister wanted people to think we were just white. And we didn't want to speak the other language. You know, right. we purposely tried to look as American as possible. And, um, and you know, I'm sad about that. But other kids are cruel. And so when you don't use it, you lose it. Oh, okay. So now, you know, I probably have maybe a 200 word vocabulary, but I definitely cannot carry on a conversation. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I would have never, I would have never put that together. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so I don't know if you want to, you know, say this, but um, what, I guess, what part of Houston do you reside in or do you live in? I, I live in the Galleria. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so my husband and I, um, we're not uh, super crazy and wild, but we love to go out to eat. And okay. um, I really like to walk or run okay. to our destination. I feel like it helps keep me thin. <laughs> but um, it makes me feel like I'm doing something good exercise-wise and then also get to have fun. So we like to live in the city so that we have a lot of options. Oh, cool. Okay. I um, I lived in Sugar Land when I went to high school. Okay. Uh, but when my boyfriend and I come to Houston, we stay in the Galleria during, like, in the um, Doubletree, the Hilton. Yeah. So we stay, like, right in that area. So it's like, yeah. Okay. Well, so when um, I was filming the show, we lived in that high rise, M5250, um, oh. like, right by the Doubletree. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so cool. that's where I lived when we were filming, but we moved out of there for a whole mess of reasons. But. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Um, well, is there anything else that you want, you know, anyone who may be watching this to know about you or, um, or anything? I don't know. You know, I haven't seen it, so I don't know what I'm going to look like. Right. Uh, one of the ladies who interviewed me today came up to me and she said, oh, I saw the first episode. And I said, oh, what did you think? And she said, oh, I felt so sorry for you. And what? I was like, uh... <laughs> Oh, that's right, because you haven't seen it. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't really know what they put right. in each episode, and so I'm like, what happens to me? Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to be portrayed. I know that, um, you know, for the most part, I'm pretty sweet, but I do, um, I do lack a filter, but I didn't really let that come out in the filming, mm. um, and I think as you get more comfortable with the cameras and the situation, it probably gets too comfortable, right. but... Um, yeah, I think everybody's going to think maybe I'm like this sweet little angel and, you know, <laughs> I don't know that it's always that way. <laughs> so if they asked you to do it again for like another season at this point, would you consider doing it? So I absolutely would because there is a couple of differences. So when we filmed the show, my office was in a medical building in the medical center that was owned by Memorial Hermann Hospital. Mm -hmm. When the camera crew came to film, um, they didn't anticipate that things would be so strict here in Houston. And the entire medical center said no to the cameras. Oh. So we couldn't film in every place that I worked. Right. Like any place that was encompassed by that group. Um, so even if we would get a patient that was open to filming, if their insurance was in that hospital, then we couldn't follow them there. Oh. Um, and so it became very stressful, kind of like struggling to find patients that were willing to do it and that the hospital or clinic signed off to let us. Um, so we were very limited. You wow. know, This time around, um, my partners and I, we built a building and we own our office and our operating rooms. So we wow. have both a cosmetic operating room, a quad ASF certified one in my office. And then we also have a six OR surgery center on my floor that is all owned by us. So if the cameras wanted to come back and follow me this time, any and every patient of mine would be fair game if the patient wanted to do it. Oh, like the cameras okay. could go everywhere with me. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So I think it would be easier, you know, because right. then it would be like, they're not there. Cause I would just be doing what I do and they could just come along where last time it was like, where are you doing that? Who did you talk to? You know, yeah. and it was just too much work. Okay. All right. Well, then I am excited to see the season. I'm super excited. 
Um, I always like to see when, you know, there's a show that starts out and they do like a spinoff. I'm always excited to see how the cast is different, like how you guys are different. And plus you're in Texas and you're in Houston from somewhere yeah. I used to live. So it's all exciting. Um, so I'm really excited. I, I can't wait to see what you guys are doing, what you guys are bringing. So the question is, will you watch it Friday night or will you DVR it and watch it on a different night? I am going to watch it live. So I will be watching it and I will be live tweeting all of my thoughts. So okay. I'm going to watch it the same day. And then you're going to tweet me and be like, uh, are you crying after that scene? Are you holding it together? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, do you feel sorry for me too? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, you've been super nice to me. Thank you so much. I don't really get a lot of people who, I've done interviews before, but then of course, you know, I'm just, you know, some guy on Twitter asking people to Skype and do interviews and it's like, yeah. whoa, wait a minute. So. <laughs> well, I think that um, the first people that reach out are always special to you. You know, I don't know where all of this is going to go, but right. my parents were both professional wrestlers. And so I kind of grew up knowing what fame was like. Um, and so I think when you're little and you're a nobody and somebody's excited to talk to you, you'll remember that person. So, yeah. you know, I, I imagine if this thing blows up, I'll probably have like, you know, big name people being like, can I interview you? And I may, might be like, no, I already got someone I'm talking to later. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, I, one thing I want to, you just said your uh, parents were professional wrestlers. That's so amazing. <laughs> like, that's so. It's weird, right? <laughs> it's completely weird. That's crazy. So were they were they wrestlers here or were they? Yeah. So um, both of them wrestled here. Oh, cool. My dad came over at 21 and came over to wrestle here after he trained there in Tokyo. Um, and my parents met each other in a mixed tag team match. And that's how they <laughs> started dating and got married. And then my mom retired when she had my sister, who's older than me. So um, really, I grew up just watching my dad wrestle. That's but, so cool. you know, we would go to the grocery store and people would recognize him and bombard him or, you know, when he would come pick me up at school, the kids would get really excited and everybody would want to run out and see him. Um, so like, I know that it can get a little bit weird when you do this kind of stuff. That's so neat. Well, I learned a whole lot. I didn't know what to ask and now I learned a whole lot. So I'm glad I didn't know what to ask. <laughs> well, um, I appreciate you speaking with me. I really, really do. Um,